Greetings math friends. In this video I'm going to look at some applied mathematics problems that are for circuits and fundamentals of electricity. Uh, these types of problems could be applied to physics, engineering, FCC licensing, uh, potentially aspects of military needs. So just fundamental electricity things. So lots of applications for this. The first problem that we're going to look at, we have a device producing 1.8 watts of output. I like to write down my givens and just pull them out of the problem. We have a 64 volt power supply and then we have 110 milliamps of current. Uh, usually with these calculations, we want to convert this to amps. So this is going to be 0 0.110 amps. I'm keeping the zero there for significant figures, um, potential calculations there. Uh, in the problem that I have, I don't have a decimal point here, so we're not counting the zero as significant figures. And with these two other uh, givens, the significant figures are going to be two digits. All right, and we're going, we're being asked to calculate the uh, power that is wasted to heat loss, which this is a very realistic situation when we have machines and electronics. We lose a lot of energy to the environment in the form of heat. Uh, there's lots of calculations we could potentially draw into this. We're not going to use Joule's formula in this. Uh, first of all, we're going to start with a calculation of power. All right. We know a wattage, we know a voltage, and we know a current. So we're going to use the uh, power formula here. We're going to calculate the actual power for this system, and then we are going to compare it to the actual power uh, output. And the difference between the output and the actual power that's available to the system is what is lost to the environment in the form of heat. So we're going to take the voltage and multiply it by the current. So we have 64 times 0.11, and this is going to give us a rating in watts. Multiplying these out, we get 7.04 watts is the power that we get from this device. And then we're going to take 7.04 and subtract 1.8, and this is going to give us the loss, which is 5.24 watts. This is lost to the system. Since we can generate this much power, essentially, but we're only getting this much as power output, we've lost 5.24 watts to the environment. And if you need significant figures, you would round this to 5.2 watts. For the next problem, we are going to use the famous Ohm's Law. We have a voltage across a resistor. We have 2.5 amperes of current flowing through a 60 ohm resistor. And we want to know the voltage. So we're going to take the current times the resistance and this is going to give us the voltage. So this is just multiplication, and then the answer is that product. So we get 150 volts will be the answer here. We're going to be using this formula for our next problem. Even though we do have resistance in here, we are being asked to calculate the maximum voltage that can be applied across a parallel circuit. And we don't want to exceed the wattage rating. 
we start out with two resistors, a 500 ohm resistor, and it's for two watts, and then we have a 1500 ohm resistor for one watt. And to find the entire resistance for this in parallel, you would take the reciprocals of each of these values, add them together, take the reciprocal of that. That's not actually what we have to do. That's a lot more work than is really needed for this problem. All we need to do is apply this to each of these and whatever the smallest number is, that is going to be the limit for this particular circuit. So we're going to take 2 times 500, that is 1,000. And then we're going to take the square root of that. We're going to take 1,500 times 1, take the square root of that. We can already see that this is going to be the answer that we're looking for. This comes out to about 31.6 volts. And this is going to be the limit to this particular circuit. We don't have to know what the entire circuit is together because the entire circuit is going to be limited right here to this resistor. If we exceed this uh, voltage, we will exceed the wattage rating for the entire circuit uh, because we're limited by this particular resistor here with uh, this 2 watt resistor. Uh, so we don't have to go any further. We don't have to get any more complicated than this. We just look at each of these individually, do this calculation, and know that that is going to be our limit. Uh, the other one here comes out to be 38.7 volts. And obviously, this one was the smaller one. So this is the limit to the circuit. For the next problem, we are going back to Ohm's law. We're going to want that the voltage is going to be equal to the resistance times the current. We have a 250 volt connection and we have a 150 ohm resistor and we want to know what the current is through the resistor. So I'm going to divide this on both sides. What I'm really doing is I'm taking the ohms formula here and I'm dividing the resistance on both sides. So this is I is equal to V divided by R. That's all. I'm just a little algebra here. That's what I'm going to do here. 200. Get some weird stuff going on with my marker. Divided by 150. Uh, since there's zeros on both ends here, this is immediately a reducible fraction, and we can look at this. We can also see that 5 goes into this, 5 goes into that, 5 times 5 goes into that 3 times, and then we have that 3 goes into that uh, 1.6 um, repeating. So uh, if you need two significant figures, we have one. 0.7 amperes uh, for our final answer here. Ohm's law is really useful. We're going to use it again for my next problem. I have 4 amps of current that is flowing through a resistor and we have a 100 volt source and we need to know what the resistance is. So again, looking at this, I want resistance to be equal to the rest of this. I'm going to divide I on both sides. So this is V divided by I. So again, this is just Ohm's law reworked. I'm going to take my voltage divided by my current, and that's going to be my resistance. So 100 divided by 4, this is going to give me uh, 25 ohms. And that's our final answer on that.
So I have power and I have my resistance. So resistance is in this formula, power is in this formula. But notice I have a V and an I here and a V and an I over here. What we're going to do is we're going to take this and substitute it into this. Notice that V is equal to IR and I have a V here. So I'm going to take this and plug it in here. So I have a new formula that the power is equal to I times R and then times the I that's already in there. So I've taken out the V and put in IR since V is equal to IR. So I have this new formula which simplifies to be that the power is equal to I squared times R because it's I times I. We have I squared there. So we have a new formula that's a combination of Ohm's law and our power formula. And then we want to know current, first of all, is what we'd like to know. So I'm going to solve this for current. So I'm going to divide both sides by R, and then I'm going to take the square root. So I have P divided by R, take the square root of that, and that is equal to current. Now, power resistance, I'm going to take the 20 divided by the 2,000 and take the square root, and this is our current. So this is 1 over 10 or 0.1. And that's our current for this particular circuit. What we're trying to answer here is we're trying to answer the maximum RMS or DC voltage. So ultimately we have a voltage issue here. So we're going to go back to here and plug in this current into here. We already have this resistance. So we're multiplying the 0.1 times the 2000 to get our voltage. So the voltage is equal to the 0.1 current from here times the original 2000 ohm resistance that we had. And this gives us that we have 200 volts for our system. So it's really a two-step problem. We have to apply this formula and this formula. So if you have a formula sheet and you have both those formulas, we're using this one and then this one. Uh, if you don't have a formula sheet and you just know kind of the two basic formulas here, we can get this formula by applying Ohm's law inside of the power formula there. And 200 volts is going to be our solution for this problem. All right, just a couple more problems here. All right, the next one that I'm going to do is we're starting out with Ohm's law again, but we want to make a note that uh, resistance in a circuit is additive. So this R here can actually be a series of R's. So I'm going to label this as Rn plus Rk. So these are two different resistors within my circuit. And I'm adding my resistance to be this, which is my total resistance. So this is the modification I'm making to Ohm's law for the next problem. Our problem is that we have a relay coil and we have a given current of 125 milliamps. Okay, and then we have to convert this to amps. So it's going to be 0.125 amps. And then our other given is we have a resistance of 500. So 500 ohms is a given. And we want to know what resistance we can connect in series to this 
so that we operate at 110 volt DC. Okay, so there's a missing resistor that we need to account for. So we know a voltage, we know a current, and we know one of these resistances. We need to know what the other one is. So we need a bit of a rearrangement for this. We'd like it to be solved for, um, I'm gonna say R sub K. We're gonna call this first one R sub N, and we'll say we're gonna solve for R sub K here, the, the next resistor that we're adding into this circuit. So the first thing I'm gonna do, since these resistors are multiplied to the current, I'm gonna divide the current out so we have V divided by I is equal to, normally it would be the resistor, the single resistance, but we have two of these this time. So it's, it's equal to R sub N plus R sub K. And then I'm gonna subtract out the other one. So we have V sub I minus R sub N is equal to R sub k. That's the formula that we're going to use. So applying this now, we have 110 divided by the current of 0.125, subtracting out the 500 ohm here. We are going to have that our final answer is 380. So we have 380 ohm resistor that we can add into here to get the 110 volts. So if, if we wanted to check ourselves, we could add our 0.125 amperes in here, add the 500, the 380 together for here, and multiply that sum with that 1.25, we should get 110 as the solution. And the last problem that I'm going to work on, we have the 5 amps is through, flowing through a resistor, have a 110 volt source, we want to know what is the resistance. So the modification of this formula that we need is we need to know the V divided by I equals R. So we're going to take 110 divided by 5 and that is 22 ohms. All right, and that's the last of the uh, circuits and fundamental electronics problems that I have. Hopefully this has been useful to somebody. Cheerful calculations.